what's up welcome back to my channel today i wanted to talk about something very special to me that has completely changed my perspective and really helped me out along this year in my life and has me on a great outlook so let's talk about gratitude i know it seems like a super cliche topic and it's something that we think we do every day but it's actually one of the hardest things that has came to my consciousness and that I've been mostly aware of this year trying to make it into a habit and making it into a daily practice. So I wanted to share some techniques with you guys today and just talk about it in a more deeper sense and give you a little bit of information from everything that I've learned. I've been listening to a meditation instructor called Tamara Williams and on this app called Calm and it's actually one of the best things that I've done because she puts you through a bunch of different guided meditations and gives you daily meditations and I really studied everything she's been saying lately and put it to my daily life and it's completely changed the way that I look at everything and it's put so much light on my life period so let's get started one of the reasons that I wanted to get heavily into a gratitude practice was because I wanted to make the goal for myself of being as present as possible as I could this year and I didn't really realize how much of how much gratitude it took to get behind that goal so being grateful actually is something that puts you heavily into the present moment. The idea itself of being grateful is so overlooked. We think that it's something that it's so easy, but it's really not. It's really hard. It comes easy to us on the days that we can congratulate ourselves for doing something positive or when we get into a new relationship and we can look at everything in life in a happy way or when we get a gift from someone or when all of these positive things happen to us but we really, really need to stick to seeing the good in everything. It's super difficult to always see the gifts in our lives when all we notice is what's missing. When we should be completely noticing what's here, the roof over our heads, the water that we have running, the food on our tables, it's definitely not something that you sit around and you wait for. It's an effort, it's work, it is a conscious choice that you make every day, every minute of your life to change that perspective. There are so many factors in life that make us feel unsatisfied and negative, period. Our genetics, our biochemistry, and our cultural differences is literally what keeps us in a dissatisfied emotion. It keeps us in a state of discontent. When we grow up as kids, we have our parents giving us everything. We don't really take the time to be grateful because we expected to be taken care of. Therefore, growing up, our expectations for things that are given to us are heightened and take it for granted almost every day. We live in a society where we really need to be conscious and awakened to the fact that we as humans rely on each other for our happiness. And we don't even get or spend the time thinking about the smallest things like the food that's on our table. Do we ever really think about the person who went out to the fields and picked it for us so that we could get that fresh fruit and vegetables? Do we even think about the person that built the house that we live in? Our clothes that we have. We don't even think about the people who are actually sitting there stitching it together. Just take a look around you right now. Scan your scenery. Scan the space and recognize that so much of what you enjoy and depend on is caused by someone else's hard work and care. We are a part of this interdependency with people who rely on each other every day in billions of different ways. When we consciously think about it, in a sense, we owe everything to other people. So if we're surrounded by the constant support of others, then why is it so hard for us to recognize and be appreciative for what we're given? Because as humans, we have a natural tendency for dissatisfaction. We come programmed with all of these barriers and a lot of them start with asking yourself, what is it that we want out of life? Everybody wants to be happy, right? Happiness. In psychology, it shows that everyone is born with a set point on happiness, which typically means that happiness just comes easier to some than others. Our happiness levels are not entirely in our control. We have predetermined set points, which include the genes we live in, the genes we are born with, and the circumstances that we are born with and the circumstances that we were born into. This is why being rich and winning the lottery doesn't really keep happiness for long. So when I got to this point, I was wondering, what's the point of even practicing gratitude if our happiness is fully determined? The fact is that if we develop a habit of using gratitude daily, 
our happiness levels can definitely climb higher than usual. The key is to create a gratitude practice so that we can always see the blessings in our lives. So there is a negativity bias in psychology and they talk about how negativity is a survival mechanism and how we are programmed to mostly see the negative things in life. And it's so true, an act of kindness can easily be forgotten when an argument can be held on for years. And the same is true for hurtful memories, disappointments, and failures. They stick with us. So if this bias makes us unhappy, why do we have it? It's proven that this negativity bias was actually helpful back in the day and not now. So as we can see, our ancestors needed these types of survival mechanisms to be able to identify themselves and keep themselves out of harm's way. They had to know which animals were harmful and which weren't, which mushrooms were edible and which were poisonous. But the thing is, we're not in danger like we were hundreds of thousands of years ago. So we don't need to think that way. And yet we're stuck with this negative hardwiring. Luckily, we have the power to navigate through our negative emotions and train our brains into a positive mindset by using gratitude. When we strengthen the habit of being grateful, we give messages to our neural pathways in our brains to be happier and positive. The more we do this, the more we train our brains, the stronger it grows like a muscle. So the challenge is to feed the right path, the positive one. And it's a challenge because we are hardwired with negativity. Negativity really becomes a hardwired habit. We hear millions of stories and people have it million times worse than us. But at the end of the day, we have a choice. No matter how hard our lives are, no matter how difficult the things that we are going through are going, we have a choice. We can either choose to view the world with a filter of negativity, or we can choose to view it in an appreciative one. When we dwell on what's missing, we miss out on the profound gifts that we get to experience every day. And sometimes we just need to look at what's right in front of us, even if the gratitude part is just not quite there yet. Even when the words felt hollow, I still did the work of choosing gratitude. Slowly, my words became more and more meaningful and I started to definitely see a shift in the way I looked at the world. Gratitude brings a shift that brings a brighter view and look out on our life. The key is waking up and waking up from this dream that has you falsely living your truth, waking up and noticing the blessings. In the world we live in today, with social media being the way that it is, it's so easy for us to go online and get so caught up in this dissatisfaction, this never ending dissatisfaction, where we want one thing and then once we get it, we want something else. And then once we get that, there's always gonna be something more that we want. And we don't even notice that the moment of us craving something is the moment that we lose touch with the now. And this is where my practice got exactly where I wanted it to be, about being present. The Buddha's noble truth said that the origin of suffering is craving and attachment. If we can just catch ourselves when we get caught up in that wanting feeling and turning to gratitude and using it as an antidote, we can train ourselves and really shine the light on what we do have. Comparison is also part of our nature. There's a theory called the social comparison theory where psychologists studied that comparing ourselves is used as a way to understand ourselves better. Although it can help us understand ourselves better, it could be super detrimental to our own mental health. And I myself am very guilty of using comparison in a way which was very detrimental to my mental health. I had to get to a point of really understanding that whatever I'm looking at online, I couldn't be using it as a form of comparison in a toxic, negative way, but more of an inspirational type of way because it's so easy for us to access our phones daily and compare our lives. We all we see is everybody taking more trips, having better lives than us, and we get caught in this hole which makes our mindsets go deeper and deeper into negativity rather than appreciating what's right in front of us. It definitely takes us further and further away from appreciation. There's a quote that I love that says, there's only one factor as to why you are not experiencing bliss in every moment. And that reason is because you're focused on what you don't have. And I am a true believer in that. There's a technique that I've been using that's been helping me deal with the social comparison theory that everyone tends to fall into. And that is to compare our lives, our personal lives to the lives of our own ancestors. And it's been helping me because when you think about everything that we're able to do now that our grandparents or great grandparents and even go further back into that, 
and what they haven't been able to even experience or wouldn't even have been able to think about doing now, it really takes you into a deep appreciation for what we do have. When I think about just as close as my grandmother being a woman growing up in Colombia, not even getting the chance to ever learn how to read or write or even drive a car. I mean, that's super close to my generation, but even when I just think about her, there's so much appreciation that comes into my life and towards everything that I've been able to learn and do here in this country and guys honestly the path of happiness what i learned isn't something that you wait for and is it isn't something that you look forward to or look ahead to it's now it's choosing and being present and being present is the biggest gift of all that's literally why they call it the present <laughs> Another little exercise I'm going to give you guys that I've been practicing or trying to practice every either morning that I wake up or every night right before I go to bed that actually helps me fall asleep too is the gratitude countdown. Think of 10 things, 10 genuine things. And the hardest part about this is that after the second to third day, you start really having to think hard about what you are grateful for. And using this technique will lead you to the smallest and being appreciative over the smallest things in your life it's literally been the biggest eye opener because after you get to like third fourth day it becomes a habit to say the same thing over and over again but you have to break out of that and you have to really tune into different appreciative things that that make up your daily life so what's the purpose of being grateful what's the purpose of all of this you know it's to wake up to wake up to being here to being present to being aware and using this consciousness this beautiful consciousness that we all have to be aware of everything that's going on in our lives being grateful and living in gratitude and most of all i think for myself it's really preparing me for the darkest days of my life to be able to shine the greatest light and the biggest light that i can on those days because if i'm practicing it now there's no doubt about it that when those days do come because they will i will be ready for them and that is why i've taken this practice so seriously because I'm a true believer that, you know, even if you do come from the darkest past or you do come from something that you believe you can't get over and things in your life that you just, the worst could have happened to you. I really believe that we have the ability to change and reprogram our minds, to reprogram our neural pathways to be able to live in this great positive gratitude perception and look at things in a better light and the more that we do this the more that we can change ourselves change the people around us and change the world overall because there's too many of us that aren't being aware and aren't waking up to what's right in front of us we are missing everything that is beautiful we are missing the greatest days of our lives because we are so anxious all the time about the future and we are so depressed all the time about our past and we need to take the acknowledgement and use this consciousness that we have to give thanks and live in gratitude day by day. I hope even if this just reaches out to one person or helped you look at things a little bit different, then that was my purpose with this. Thank you so much, you guys, for listening to me ramble. But um, yeah, I really wanted to do this video. So thank you, guys. <laughs>